Hoffman didn't even have a board. Well, right. That's a different and when failure. Tremoth, uh, and when Tremoth said, I'm not writing a check, however, I think you should have more corporate governance, you literally told him to fuck off. Proof of work crew on the move in New York City at the Benzinga conference, but we're taking people away from that just for a little bit. Scotty Braun, Anthony Burrell, and Rishi Khanna, the CEO of StockTwits, joining us, hanging with us for a little bit. And we always okay. also like to start as much as possible with, because the Proof of Work podcast is all about what, what you're doing in the world of finance, crypto, Web3. So uh, did you watch Office Space back in the day, the movie? Do you remember that oh, movie? Oh, yeah, I love yeah. the movie, yeah. So, so part of the idea of this was, what is it that you do here? What, is, what exactly do you do with Take stock fractions rates? of pennies, man. <laughs> fractions of pennies. Yes. <laughs> Explain. So first up, just uh, thanks for joining us, first of all. Thanks for having uh, me. We man. really appreciate the conversation. But yeah, just tell the world what you're up to and what you do with StockTwits, and then we'll yeah. uh, bring it into crypto and Web3. Yeah, so Rishi, uh, CEO of StockTwits. Um, StockTwits is one of the largest uh, social platforms for uh, investors and traders, predominantly like individual and retail investors and traders. Um, it's been around for about 14 years. Obviously, started with stocks. And uh, StockTwits actually invented the cash tag, which is now pretty it's ubiquitous. Powerful. But uh, that was invented back in 09 on StockTwits, and then, you know, kind of Twitter uh, started using it as well. Um, and over the years, we've expanded in terms of, you know, the asset classes covered, right? So crypto actually became pretty popular and today is like very popular on StockTwits in terms of the conversation. Um, uh, you know, I think we've had it now for about six years on the platform. So everything from obviously like the Bitcoins and the Ethereum all the way down to, you know, we get emails like in our support channel every day. Hey, can you add this, yeah. you know? You know, random token I've never heard of in my life, right? Uh, we want to talk about it, right? So, um, and we've actually also started, you know, supporting NFTs. So we have, um, you know, a lot of uh, uh, tickers we've created for NFTs. So essentially, okay. like, you know, B A Y C, right? Yeah. Or be able, uh, you know, dot NFT, right? Okay. So we, uh, you know, so you know, for us, we look at it as, hey, what are the things that individuals want to invest in and, you know, spend time thinking about and talking about? We want to be able to form the platform and community because, you know, no one does just one thing. So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of where we're at. Did you know that they invented cash tags? I did. You I've did? actually okay. I've been a I've been a, I've been a user that's of stock That's since, a big part of your world. I, I've been a user of stock since probably 2012. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I mean, deep. I've been on the platform for a while. I've seen it evolve. I mean, it's a great community. You can you can engage and you can learn. Yeah. Um, an immense amount on on the financial markets and on the individual companies. I didn't know that you incorporated NFTs though. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's something I'm definitely going to check out. And I mean, I guess that's a good segue into. I mean, what's your take on NFTs? And Web three, yeah. honest, honest take. Yeah, my honest take is like, so I'm, you know, I'm an engineer at heart, right? So yeah. my background. Um, so I'm a fan of, you know, the the technology as you know, evolving protocols and being able to do new and interesting things. You know, we're still in the early phases where I think, you know, a lot of NFTs. Like, I'm not an art person, right? In the sense yeah. that, like, you know, people are like, well, why would you pay so much for an ape? I'm like, well, why would you pay so much for a Basquiat? Like, I don't yeah. fucking know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, so in that sense, like, hey, art is art. Like, people get to make their decisions. But I do think, you know, we've had this period of people pitching a lot of utility and value in NFTs and, like, you know, the gaming. Like, yeah. are we really going to have that many AAA games coming out of the NFT community? Uh, we're going to have zero, guys. My, like, maybe my, my, my take mm -hmm. on that's pretty abrasive. Yeah. I think it's, no, we're not. Yeah, and so, like, I think it's, you know, a lot of... You know, a lot of smoke and mirrors. I think there's a lot of people like you can make a quick buck. You were yeah. able, to, you were able to make a quick buck, like the ICO period in 2017, yep. right? And so we had that. That doesn't mean the technology of NFTs is bad. Like I actually yep. do think gaming is interesting. I think Activision needs to use it, or Roblox needs to use it. World of it. Warcraft. Or yeah, we're, you yes. know, bring Established it in. Established property, yeah, right? right? Like it, it's a tool. It's not an end, yes. right? Like, and I think that's the difference of where I look at it. Um, you know, and and you know, I, I spoke about this recently where. You know the Web three, you know, stepping a little bit away from you know NFT specifically, but everyone's like, oh well, you have ownership and stuff. I'm like, you really don't have ownership, right? Because if it was, then it'd be a security, and like, yeah. you know, then we like, yeah, you have you know access to a governance token that doesn't mean like you get you know revenue from it and Correct. stuff, right? Like, you know, like an NFT I really like, Link's DAO, right? DAO. I NFT. love Link's DAO. Love like shout out Mike YouTube. Shout out Mike Dudas. Sh shout out Mike Dudas. <laughs> exactly. Um, try to get him to come today. He didn't show up. Yeah. Um, but he'll you be know, on the pod eventually. Yeah. And we'll there's like him. value there, right? There's real value, but like I don't own the golf course they're gonna buy. Correct. I have our NFT gives us the right to buy a membership at yep. some point in time, yep. right? Um, but you can do a lot with that. So you know, I'm I'm bullish over the long term on like the technology and the things it can unlock. Yeah. The way you know. What we see today, like 99% of that is gone, yeah. I think. Like, so, I mean, you mentioned gaming a couple of times. Are you a gamer yourself? 
Um, I used to be a lot more. Yeah. Uh, now I have kids and stuff, and like you know, yeah. now my daughter is a like big Robloxer. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was like back in the day. I mean, like you know, Quake and Quake yeah, yeah. and like stuff like that, and like uh, the early days of like the Call of Duties. Um, yeah. You know. Well, it's funny because when you look at the gaming ecosystem, everyone's bullish on NFT gaming, but gamers are not. Right. Like, when you play a game, you master it. Yeah. And your skill that's applied fully correlates to your value in the game. Yeah. You're not paying ten thousand dollars on the front end to have all this expensive gear yeah. and then go God mode on everybody. Yeah. No one wants to do that. Right. We saw with, what happens in Ready Player One with that, c- right? Correct. <laughs> c- correct. I mean, it's it's a very weird, it's reversed yeah. um, right now, which I think is indicative also of the NFT market. All these projects want money on the front end. Yeah. They want success on the front end. Yeah. And then they want to trust us to go build an ecosystem. Right. And that doesn't work. That's yeah. a lot of work Turns for Turns out it the worked consumer. for a minute. It like, works. They, they, people were able to convince I mean, people for a minute. I mean, I traded the shit out of the NFT market. Yeah. I was trading mutant apes. I was trading board apes. I was yeah. trading wolf game. I mean, I was minting things for 0.25 ETH and yeah. flipping them for 9 ETH three days later. Yeah. Like, that's what I told my friends and, like, my traditional financial yeah. uh, friends. They were like, you're crazy. Like, what are you doing? I go, there's alpha. Yeah. I go, I can buy Real A. Alpha, yeah. I can sell it for B. And as long as I'm agile and as long as I'm disciplined... Yeah. I'm going to make money. Well, like, and so like that's the part, you know, I think the, if I step back, like to me, the problem with everyone like, oh, blockchain will solve that or NFTs will solve that is everyone wants to financialize every part of our lives. And the financialization, like every part of our life does not need to be financialized. I agree with you. Like that's actually like really bad for yeah. like society and like people and humans, right? Like, yeah. um, so like that's where there's this dis- like, oh, hey, it'll be decentralized, da, 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 and like, yeah. And, you know, the, you know, I don't know where you guys sit on this, but, like, the separation of money and state, I'm like, that's not how money works. And, by the way, that's Correct. not how humans work. Correct. I'm like, you can have decentralized money when we have real decentralized governments. Yeah. Guess what we, we will never have? Decentralized not governments. Not we're alive. Yeah, not, yeah. not humans. Well, like, maybe when it's AI. In, yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. But that has to do with the token conversation, too, right? I mean, every project has a token. Yeah, and it's developing like, a token. It's creating money out of thin air. Yeah, it's, right? it's um, a beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful thing until it disappears. It, 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 correct. <laughs> I mean, sure. I think I think one of the best use cases for crypto going into I guess that part of the conversation yeah. is stablecoins. Yeah. I mean, all of a, if you're an angel investor, if you're an institutional investor, I mean, you're moving six, seven, sometimes eight figures across borders. Yeah. And it sucks. Right, and so that's where like there is utility again in the technology, like. But right now it sucks in the real world because of regulations. Correct. And but those regulations are going to come. And the middlemen that right. are that are scooping up right. those fees. Yeah, yeah, but like you know that like hey, we can definitely get we can get rid of middlemen with technology Correct. too. Like we don't need the blockchain to get rid of middlemen. It makes it easier. But the blockchain is the technology. It's a form, but you can do it on a database. Correct. You can. Right. Like I mean, yeah. it's, nothing's really stopping anyone yeah. from doing that. I mean, all the big Web three companies are really Web two point five. Yeah. Like they're they're leveraging certain parts of, of Web3 and NFT technology, but yeah. there's a lot of things on the background that's taking place in a database. Yeah. Um, all of these NFT projects are built on AWS or Azure. Right. Yeah. Like, exactly. All of them. Um, I mean, yeah. the, the, the infrastructure that they're built on is centralized. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the decentralization was great. It got us here. It's a cool conversation to have. Right. It's utopian, I think, at its core. Yeah. Um, but the consumer, and I'm living this right now through the Only Gems project, the consumer doesn't care about decentralization. Right. They want cheap, fast, and easy. By the way, they don't want to use words like decentralization no. and NFTs like fungible. No. Like, That's you know, what we're talking about. Like, Correct. We're not doing you know, a I like that on my pizza. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. talking mushrooms here. I mean, it's, I mean, yeah. Well, we always bring this up. I mean, what's a better word? Digital collectibles. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, you know, use the words we use today. And it, you know, depends on the context, right? So in the context of sports and collectible, like, digital collectibles make sense. I don't know. You probably dropped the digital, too, right? Like, back in the day, remember, we used to, everything was E this, E that, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I think digital will be the same kind of thing. Like, in some number of years, it'll just be a collectible. Yeah. The medium, like, because a sculpture is a collectible. Correct. A baseball card is a collectible. Mm -hmm. A painting is a collectible. Those are all different mediums, and so... Just because it's an electronic file, why does... You know? Correct, and we can tokenize all those and put them on chain. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, people are it's doing just... It, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you're increasing the, the, the settlement, you're increasing the auth- the immutable layer of trust, the yeah. authenticity, creating provenance, and just creating that record of ownership, which yeah. I do think there's inherent value in there. Yeah, and I think, um, and that's where the tech comes yeah. in, right? It does, and it's and it's publicly verifiable. I think that's the interest, right? That's what the blockchain yes. really did. Yeah, yeah. Public, verifiable. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like... The other, the other thing I'll, I'll use, like, it's a 
you know, a blockchain is a distributed ledger, right? Like, yeah. we know that. Well, like, we don't use a ledger in our reg, like, a ledger's been around for, you know, centuries, Correct. thousands of years, right? Like, I mean, we don't use a ledger for everything in our life. Correct. Like, so that's where, again, not everything will necessarily go in a ledger, but, yeah. uh, you know, you probably can track assets and liabilities, which, you know, maybe we should have done over the last uh, I think it's, six months. Uh, I think that's yeah, that would have yeah, been yeah, a good yeah, idea. Yeah. yeah. That we could have, uh, we could have avoided a lot of things <laughs> um, that we're going through right now, which, I mean, you do have uh, organizations out there like Binance that have, which we actually just brought up in our last conversation, they've got like an $8 billion wallet that's yeah. transparent. However, their liabilities are not transparent. We don't know anything so on the, that side, So right? the transparency oh, yeah. around the assets, sure, it's great. Yeah. But as we saw with FTX, I think they had, what, $3 billion in assets on the balance sheet and $10 billion in liabilities, yeah. which you could have never saw. I mean, you would have had to go through all their other wallets, see well, the Well, they leverage. had the $6.4 billion in assets of FTT and other stuff, yeah, right? But again, yeah, you don't know the yeah. liabilities. You don't know the leverage on the liabilities, yeah. right? Like, so Binance could Correct. have, you know, $30 billion in liabilities. Well, should, you just don't know. At this point, I wouldn't doubt that. Why don't we ask them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, 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 we'll get CZ on next <laughs> yeah. um, to have a very blunt conversation yeah. about leverage. <laughs> what, um, is, yeah. what is your daughter, who's 10 years old, you yeah. said, plays Roblox a lot. What does she say? I mean, obviously, you're not having financial conversations. Maybe you are. But but what does she say about like the NFT space or the digital collectible space? Because she, right, she is deep in the She's Roblox a gamer, scene. Right? She is in a the, in the Roblox universe, a true right? yeah. genuine gamer. Yeah. So would she want to? I mean, a few years from now, especially look into a project and acquire all of these assets before the game even comes aboard? Right, so like, you know, she knows that, you know, I've gone to the conferences where we hang out, yeah. right, in the NFT stuff. And yeah. like, so she's, you know, known this for about a year and a half, like since, you know, like, you know, uh, Bitcoin 21, right, was, yeah. you know, when I first uh, went out. Um, and, you know, the reality is, is even as a gamer, like, she just makes fun of me. She's like, NFTs, like, what is that? And like, well, pick what, huh? Yeah. Like, and her and her friends, like, you know, which which tells me again, from a terminology perspective, Correct. maybe one thing, because it's not that different than the stuff she spends her Robux on. Not right? at all. Like, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same, like, yeah. you know, and, um, but, you know, they totally make fun of me and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, NFT thing, like, you know, it's a picture of a horse. Uh, you know, let's not talk about Zed right now. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but but you're right. I mean, she's talking about something that technically does exist in yeah. her current universe, yeah. universe, Robux, right? Yeah. She but, spends, spends a lot of her allowance on it. Yes. Yeah. But but that's, that's the forward way to do it, right? Because the platform exists. She's right. in that ecosystem and then she's adding to that ecosystem versus where a lot of these projects... Like, I'm like, when is this coming out? What does yeah. this do? It sounds yeah. like what you're saying is, hey, why don't companies, projects, why don't you do the work first Yeah. and establish a community, establish um, consumer interest yeah. and an and ecosystem a product. and a product and then we'll crazy fucking idea. come. Yeah, it's a cra that? crazy idea. Then we'll come over. Yeah. yeah, and so I think, like, listen, I mean, we've, we've had Kickstarters for a long time, yeah. right? Like, so I can appreciate the... Hey, you really like an idea and you want to invest, you want to make it happen, right? Because yeah. maybe not everyone can raise the money and stuff like that. But like mm -hmm. that's done in a different context and done in a different scale. Like, and it's pitched differently. Whereas here, you know, and again, it is very much about the financialization. There are a lot of rug pulls that happen, right? Like that's real. Tons. I know guys um, that have projects that literally had no inclination of ever doing anything. Ever, right? Ever. And they they had a they had I a, hope they're they, not your friend. They are the way. They are. <laughs> they had, I actually stopped talking to three of them. Um, they had a cool pitch. They had art. Yeah. They had an irrational market and just sell it, sell it, sell it. Listen, you get four or five million bucks uh, and like, you know, you avoid taxes because you're trying correct. to, you know, that's, I mean, yeah. a lot of the people do that. Uh, sure. I remember I talked to somebody at, you know, one of these spots and uh, they're like, yeah, you know, I got this and I'm just trying to figure out how to make people forget about my Discord now, uh, right? And I'm yeah. like, yo, that's, Those, you know. Yeah. That's fucked. That's, you know, it was like what, it was like what, and unethical. it was like what Kevin's saying, O'Leary is saying, the idiots are gone. Yeah. Like this reckoning has filtered them out. The, the tourists, the make-believers, like granted, they're probably still around in some parts of the ecosystem, but they're they're gone. Yeah. I mean, the the easy money, the the fast money, like it's That's, yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Which you is good. You can't just drop a you know uh, no. an eight thousand you know picture collection and no. uh, walk away with a couple mil. No. Right? Like, which is good because all the NFT collections that I've seen that have come out, let's say in the last eight months, yeah, are one to two thousand. Right. Which is a function of the market. Yeah. The demand's not there. The trust isn't there. Yeah. The, the product needs to be of higher quality, not necessarily a higher price. Um, but those those are selling out. I don't think you could do a 10,000 PFP collection. And I, you know, right it really now. does come back like uh, people got to start delivering real utility, yeah. real value now, right? Yeah. And the only places we see, we were just talking about Link's DAO, yeah. the, like a lot of the places where I have seen real utility are where it just happens to, you know, match yeah. back to membership in a physical world club, right? Yeah. Like, that's but I mean, right I think my Costco, I think my Costco card should be an NFT. 
I think my driver's license should be an NFT. How about my That's tickets to the World Series? Tickets, yeah. I think, are a huge tickets opportunity are, uh... um, for NFTs. And the things that, pe- that these manufacturers, not manufacturers, but these enterprises don't realize, like Live Nation, Tops, Fanatics. Yeah. Ticketmaster. Like, they can, like, the secondary markets, because everything's been financialized, yeah. mm-hmm. are not being tapped by the primary market. Right. And via the tokenization of these assets, they now get a tax via that royalty on the smart contract right. on the secondary market. That's why when I go to Fanatics and Tops and I'm like, guys, we have only gems. We're tokenizing sports cards. Yeah. By the way, there's a 3% royalty on that every time it trades. Yeah. Now you if can you capture- honor the royalty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now you can. It's, it's actually, that conversation is, it's, I don't know where it's going, but right now the couple of the marketplaces are making royalties optional. Right. But, so if you go on Magic Eden right now and let's say buy a Ute or buy yeah. a D-God, um, you can pick whether or not you want the royalties to be enforced or not. However, if you pick no, yeah. there's a disclaimer on there that says your NFT might be subject to no further utility oh, if you pick this option. Okay, I didn't and know that. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, no, royalty. Yeah. I was like, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it to be able to derive the future The royalties value. are reasonable, right? Like, yeah. You know, if you're trying to yeah. take a 30% VIG on No, I mean, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's obscene. That's 1%, 2%, 3%. Yeah. Like those yeah, but that's things. how marketplaces work. Like, I mean, eBay charges you how much to do 10, a transaction? 10 to 13% Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, their royalty, that's, uh, you know? Yeah. I mean, but, like, here's the thing. Like, in, you know, in those spaces, like, you get things like insurance and protection, yeah. right? So if you get sold something that's, yeah. you know, not real, you have recourse. They also have We don't buyers. have recourse yeah. in the NFT world, right? Yeah. And in the blockchain world. Like, that's also the difference. Like, why would people put their savings, you know, on a wallet where if you lose it... Correct. Um, it's gone. I have no recourse, right? Yeah. Like, I was talking to a friend last night. She bought... Two uh, board apes back in twenty one for three thousand. She doesn't have her uh, pass phrase, and like two board apes are just gone, locked Jeez. up. Um, and like that's like a hundred forty thousand dollar mistake, right? Yeah, now, yeah. Right? It was a million dollar. Was a million million dollar. The bigger mistake, mistake before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's like, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. That's why we went to Lara to see for dinner. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people out there like that, though. I mean, what was it the one guy that was famous for having like two hundred million in Bitcoin on a ledger? Oh, yeah. And he, went and to he the... had four opportunities to do the passphrase, yeah, yeah. and it locked. He was down uh, to like the last one. Yeah. Whatever, like yeah. I've got, I, I've got this uh, Lattice Grid Plus for cold storage. Okay. And what they've done is they've actually developed a safe card. Okay. So when I want to sign a, if I want to ever reboot my wallet, yeah. the card stores the pass, the pa- uh, seed phrase. Okay. So I've got one in my safety deposit box. Okay. I've got four of them hidden all over my house. The cards. My mom has one. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case there's like redundancies everywhere. Okay. okay. So I can't lose it. But yeah. that's why I went with that wallet because a ledger, if it gets compromised or if the, if it gets screwed up, like you're done. Yeah. Like th- with this, at least I have the safe key. So if I ever need a no- new interface, the key plugs in, I hit my 12 digit code yeah. and loads right up. Access is there. Oh, that's pretty cool. So the, the technology is going to get there. I mean, yeah. that's the one thing with crypto right now. We, we all say we want mass adoption. The UI and the UX, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't work. Like, it, it sucks. It's not there. You need a computer yeah. science degree in order to use half the stuff. Yeah. Um, and like, it's, I spent a lot of time in it and I'm still like, yo, I can't deal with yeah. that. Like, I mean, yeah. you know. But I mean, you, people have to learn. Like, when I, I was very intimidated by it at first, yeah. I put $100 into a MetaMask. I bought coins, transferred coins, bridged yeah. coins, yeah. bought NFTs, sold NFTs, transferred it, and then I was like, "All right, now this works." So let me ask you, like someone that's you know been really active in the space, yeah. Anytime you do like you know you put in a new wallet address, or you're going to transfer some, like, how many times do you check and double check? I still, and get, triple ang- check? I still get anxiety every time. You do right because yeah. it's a simple because the problem with the addresses, I mean, a .eth is different Fair. because it's usually like a proper noun or something .eth, yeah. but if you can't type out. An, an ETH address, yeah. it's just too hard. Right. So every time I'm copy and pasting, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay, like, like am I it's, sure, am I yeah. sure? <laughs> I, I, it still happens. Yeah, okay. It still happens. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Like I, I transferred a board Ape uh, last week, and it was like, I was like giving someone the keys to like my, my house. Yeah. I was like, if this gets fucked up, right. it's irreversible, <laughs> like please don't be the one time, and I've never lost anything. Okay. I've actually been good with that. Okay, great. Um, yeah. But, but yes, I still get anxiety every time I send something via yeah. MetaMask. And that's not going to yeah. work with, you know, most, I would say, senior citizens that didn't grow up with anything close to this technology no. or even going way down the line in terms of age. So there has to be a lot of, what would what, you call it, updates, basically. Yeah, yeah I mean, the UI UX. It's easier to do. Yeah, it needs to be completely rebuilt. But yeah. I mean, the good thing is, is with regulation, we're going to be able to have institutions buy in. And right. those senior citizens, even people 50 and up, their financial advisor is going to say, all right, I'm giving you 1% to 3% leverage right. in your account. 
here's your Ethereum position, here's your Bitcoin position, and it's going to sit there. If that does happen, we're going hockey stick. I mean, I hate saying to the moon, but I mean, it would <laughs> literally go to the moon if, if financial advisors and institutions just start allocating 1% to 3% right up, in their uh, portfolios. Yeah. And that takes no innovation. It takes no nothing. The product's already there. Yeah. It's just got to be transparent and regulated which yeah. is where I'm hoping we're going. And that, yeah, and like, you know, uh, hopefully we can, you know, learn from the mistakes of past regulations and yeah. create cleaner. I don't know that we'll do that in the first couple of passes, right? Because yeah. that's not how this shit works usually. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm a fan of like simple regulations. Like yeah. simple building blocks can build really complex systems, yeah. right? But um, I mean, I think we need to look at crowdfunding because crowdfunding came out. It was super aggressive. Yeah. People got rugged. Yeah. I mean, consumers got hurt. Yeah. We had bad actors. And then we got regulation. Yeah. Crowdfunding, I still don't truly believe in it. However, I do think it's a great mechanism. Yeah. But it works. The mechanism when works. It's you yeah. know it still has the problem of like the selection bias. Yeah. Right? The projects that have to go to crowdfunding are yes. the ones that couldn't like, go to I know VC, I yes. know VCs. That's the one thing I've learned in the Web three space. Yeah. A lot of the VCs are like, all right, so I've got my fund, and then if the deal doesn't pass muster, I pass it to my syndicate. Interesting. And it's like, all right, so you're basically giving them the scraps yeah. to crowdfund. Wait, explain and, that for everyone. Okay, so AngelList. So if I have a syndicate on AngelList, um, the only gem syndicate, mm -hmm. if me and you see the next sexiest thing possible, we deploy a check from the fund side, we have the discretion to allow the syndicate part of the allocation. So that would be the right thing to do. What a lot of people do is, is look at the deals, look at the deals, look at the deals. All right, this deal is like a six out of 10. Yeah. I'm going to give it to the syndicate. Yeah. The 10 and out then, of 10 I'm going to take for my yeah. fund in entirety. Mm. Correct. And then by giving it to the syndicate, I'm probably still getting some sort of derived value yeah. from the founders, from AngelList, and I'm getting a carry yeah. on their money regardless. Yeah. And they're going into, let's say, the B-rated projects versus like the AAA-rated exactly, um, yeah. projects. Gotcha, gotcha. It's, but I mean, that unfortunately, that's the way. I mean, I've learned it the hard way in DC and in the traditional capital markets. Yeah, and that's by it's, that, that's it's just by money design, too, It's by right? it's money. Like, yeah. Like you want you want access to Tesla's IPO? Okay, have 150 million dollars in a sophisticated wealth manager at Goldman. Right. Like, if you that's don't have you that, have. tough shit. Right. Like, like we were standing in line for the restaurant last night at Emilio's, and there was four groups of people that literally got there, texted the maitre d, he came out and got them and yeah. walked them right in. And I told Shad and the other guy we were with, I'm like, dude, you can't get mad at that. If we were in Miami or if we were somewhere else, I'd do the exact same thing. Right. It's club it's, access. It's, it's, it's access. Yeah. They happen to know the guy. It's relationships. They get preferential treatment. Right. This is how yeah. the world works. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing and it's applicable to everything. Yeah. I mean, if you have the access and you have the connections. It's like when we get the pre-mint access. Correct. Right? Like yeah. we, we get a lot of those just because yes. who we happen to know. Correct. Like, you know, and then we, flip. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually never been smart enough to do the flip side yeah. of it. I just, you know, do this. Well, I buy all my NFTs. <laughs> all my NFTs, I buy in threes, no matter what. Keep, flip, keep, flip, and, and then usually, if it goes, if it goes really aggressive, yeah, I'll I'll dump the second one. Do the double. Yeah, yeah, and then I just keep the one that I really like. Okay. Yeah. All right, I like that. Yeah. But like, for instance, with like the apes, like ApeCoin, the yeah. land, um, I didn't keep any of that. I okay. sold all of my land pre-reveal for like sixty-eight Ethereum. Oh, nice. Like on the day that they issued it, I was like, yeah. fuck this. Out. I believe in the project. <laughs> I believe in the in what they're building. But you just gave me seventy Ethereum for free right, yeah. as a dividend. My cost basis on the ape was seventeen grand, oh. and I was like, yeah. done. I kept the mutants, so I have a full set: B A Y C, M A Y M M one mutant, M two mutant. I was like, that's all I need. Okay. Those the, my cost basis was nothing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And then just unload all of the other assets that you got for free that were the utility. Yeah. I mean, sure, if the utility is collecting a dividend, which then we're talking <laughs> about securities. Um, it is what it is. But Hopefully I mean, the, Gensler doesn't watch this spot. Co correct. <laughs> um, I mean, the one thing, though, that I've really dawned on me that like the true utility of NFTs, I've met people from all walks of life all around the globe yeah. via NF because of NFTs. Yeah. I bought Rengas. I've met, met a ton of people in Japan, Australia, yeah. the Middle East, um, and I talk, and we all have groups that we talk in on Twitter. Yeah. I mean, the human connection that comes from the digital. Yeah, the community, like yeah. the human community that's been built around it, yeah. right? And the passion and the energy around, not just NFTs, but even crypto, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, we're at a crypto conference, Correct. right? Yep. Um, that's real. I mean, and, and oh, like, yeah. I've made a ton of great friends, right? Correct. Like, I mean, through it and, uh, so that, that's real and it lasts, and people do want to build value. Correct. I mean, you know, there's a lot of great actors in the, you know, yeah. in the space and stuff. Um, 
Yeah, so you can't you can't knock that. Yeah, I mean the one thing that I feel like the NFT industry or NFT industry sector, whatever you want to call yeah. it, wasn't prepared for, and you know this from running large companies, these guys weren't expecting to be running unicorns right. in six months. Yeah. Um, I mean, these guys had art projects right. and NFT projects that they were like, okay, here's a sexy website, here's a roadmap, here's yeah. some cool art, let's put it out there and see what happens. Next thing you know, eight months later, they're raising at a $5 billion valuation from Mark Andreessen. Right, yeah. Like that takes a certain pedigree of entrepreneur to be able to accept, I guess, digest and then act on. Yeah. Like right. a lot of the guys now are just like, well, what do we do? And, and now, now they have that's a budget, budget though. Right? Like, they have a budget. I mean, what maybe there, should there be NFT consultants or experts that come in to help them? Also, if VCs are investing, I mean, shouldn't they be auditing them more and be like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, but I mean, look you at know, FTX, what are your future plans? Bank, Bankman didn't even have a board. Well, right. That's a different and when failure. Chamath, and uh, when Chamath said, I'm not writing a check, however, I think you should have more corporate governance, he literally told him to fuck off. Yeah. Like, in text, said, fuck off. I've seen emails, I've gotten forwarded emails where Sam responded to VCs that asked questions. Yeah, and yeah. Like, he said, like, like, he's like, I don't think you're a good investor. I, don't, I wouldn't yeah. recommend you to any of my friends. Da, da, da. It's a sociopath. Um, and I was like, yo, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. And that was like in 21. Yeah. Right. So, and I'd never seen those before, but uh, now they're all coming out, right? Yeah. Was like, well, he uh, was a hype man. You know, he created yeah. hype, though. And he had the power and the leverage, I guess, to, to say that to people. Well, right? you know, and I've, I've said this a lot lately, and I've, I've believed this for most of my career. I mean, I did my first startup in the dot-com days, yeah. and then, you know, and through the eras of tech. Um, I think one of the big challenges tech has in general, but it's like been very pronounced in crypto and NFTs is this culture of reverence and yeah. putting like individuals on pedestals and and therefore like we no longer ask questions, Correct. right? And so like I just don't believe in that cultural reverence. No. Like I don't like, you know, yeah, there are people that are super famous and yeah. you know, this and that. I've met a lot of famous people and stuff, but like they're just people. Yeah. Like and so if and especially if you're giving them money or if like, you know, yeah you should be comfortable asking like yes. questions that you would ask the random person you're giving money, yep. right? Um, I put out a tweet the other week that I was like, big red flag for an NFT collection, a founder that has looked at some, it looked at like some Jesus character right. um, by the community. I was like, if that's go, if that's the case, get out. Yeah. I was like, don't, it's, it's not going to end well. Yeah. If you can't ask them questions, and, they, and especially if they won't like, listen, sometimes it's not their fault, and but if they're up front, if they're yeah. answering questions that are part of the, you know, being a part of the process. Yeah. Then it's fine, but yeah, like, yeah. I mean, that's a, it's a big problem we have. Again, not just in you know, I mean, this is the, you know, uh, Elizabeth Holmes and Toronto, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, and uh, I mean, we have a whole history of this. Yes, and and we're not we're not talking about a crazy ask here. It's like, hey, you should be able to ask questions and get answers. Wow, what a concept! Well, I mean, the thing I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't understand, and I've actually been told this straight to my face. Guys go, I'm a big boy. I'm writing you a check. I don't care if things are terrible. I don't care if things are amazing. Right. Tell me the truth. Yeah. I don't care about losing the money. Just don't fucking lie to me at right. all costs. Mm -hmm. Right. Tell me straight and we're good. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like that holds true for a lot of investors, especially professionals. Yeah. Like they understand the game they're playing. Like, yeah, I mean, professional investors absolutely do, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I mean, you know, in, in the VC world, like yeah. we all know this, like most people expect it to go to zero, Correct. right? Especially the early stage shit. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like as long as you've told me you're doing what you're doing and like you know you're not you know yeah. uh, doing x and y instead doing y or pitching mm -hmm. me x and doing y Correct. or whatever it might be right? radical yeah. pivots yeah. yeah i mean if you need to do that like just say hey we're doing a radical pivot because yeah. like our first idea didn't work out yeah. right um i've actually seen a couple of those emails right like lately because a lot of companies are in that position yeah right? a lot of crypto um, companies are uh but even regular like yeah. tech companies right just have to do the radical pivot yep um they're turning the lights off on us so we're back at the conference but hey we really appreciate having you on <laughs> thanks yeah, this man. has been great appreciate really it. great yeah. to catch up conversation about all of this so it was Lo fun. love the the conversations in the cars yeah <laughs> if we could do this for every ride it would make my life a lot more fun yeah new york city traffic <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah cool man awesome appreciate it awesome